Good morning and welcome to today's Encouraging Quarantine Devotion. Michael here coming to you from Missouri uh, and uh, looking forward to jumping into God's Word and uh, and learning some stuff together. So uh, as always, uh, please uh, comment below and, uh, and engage in the conversation. Uh, these discussions are always far more interesting uh, when multiple people engage and, and have some dialogue around it. So we all learn together. Uh, by no means do uh, do I profess to know everything. Uh, in fact, every day uh, God uh, teaches me uh, how little I really know, and uh, and it's fun and exciting. So uh, let's jump into God's Word uh, today. I actually want to encourage you in the in, in a kind of an upside down way. Um, I'm a firm believer that God's kingdom is an upside down kingdom, and uh, and as we go through our life and our world right now is upside down uh, by uh, any measure you can pretty much come up with. Um, everything that we do now requires uh, some complexity of decision. You know, hey, let's go out to eat. Oh, are we going to eat inside or outside? Uh, do they require masks or not? And, um, you know, what do we have to think about in, in terms of that? Did we break enough hand sanitizer? Uh, those there's just so much complexity has been added and all of this serves to steal our joy and if you're just looking for happiness uh, and which I get sucked into all the time I'm like I'm just not happy why am I not happy? why am I miserable and it's I often find it's because I'm looking for the wrong thing uh, I'm looking for easy and nothing in the Bible ever portrays that this life is gonna be easy uh, whether you're a believer or not um, it's nothing says easy uh, and so we have to look at life in a different way and the Bible teaches us this and there's actually a couple things that I want to share with you one of them um, is uh, is from Oswald Chambers uh, if you've ever if you ever get the opportunity to um, read his devotional um, and I'm gonna have to look at the title because I never can remember it exactly. My utmost for his highest. I always want to mess that up. Um, but this thing was written like a hundred years ago. So it, in context, um, it was written around the time of the last pandemic, I believe. So, so there's some interesting. I'm gonna to have to think about that some more because it just occurred to me. But we, what he wrote and what he wrote about the Bible. Um, is so applicable today in in our life and situation we're in and in our walk with Christians and believers and trying to uh, unpack what this stuff means in our life. But scripturally, um, John uh, chapter 3, I want to read a couple verses there. And this is from uh, John the Baptist is is speaking here. And he's, he's kind of given a contrast between what his role is and, and what Christ is. Uh, and his perspective is one that is fascinating for me and also so contrary to our culture and and what we're living. Um, but in, let's see, in verse 30, uh, I'm going to read verse 30 and, sorry, I'm going to get this right here in a second, verses 29 and 30. Of John chapter 3. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. So this joy of mine has been made full. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth is from the earth and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. So there's a contrast here between the bridegroom and the friend of the bridegroom. Um, I actually recently went to a wedding uh, in Texas, and you can imagine the number of decisions that that required um, and could have been very stressful. But in the midst of all of that, uh, we were rejoicing because of, of this couple. I wasn't the bridegroom, and, and nobody um, in my family, immediate family, was the bride. Uh, but we were so happy. It was all about them. It was so exciting and and just joyful. And everybody was was so happy for them. But none of us were getting married. And and that's that's this idea. Uh, but it's so 
contrary to what we believe normally or how we act to think that God or Jesus must increase and we must decrease and to find joy in that. So think of that in, in think of it in those terms of, of God increasing and us decreasing. And I'm going to read uh, this from, um, from Oswald Chambers. He says, if you become a necessity to a soul, you are out of God's order. As a worker, your great responsibility is to be a friend of the bridegroom. When once you see a soul inside of the claims of Jesus, you know that your influence has been in the right direction. And instead of putting out a hand to prevent the throes, pray that they grow ten times stronger until there is no power on earth or in hell that can hold that soul away from Jesus Christ. Uh, that's just part of it. Um, if you get a hold of it, this is the March 24th, uh, actually, devotional for the day uh, in, in that devotion. But uh, the idea is, is the friend of the bridegroom is going to do everything we can to, to bring the bridegroom and the bride, the, the church, the body, together. And if you see God working in someone's life, uh, we, we rejoice because we, we helped get them there. We helped in that process, and that's joyful. Now, this is the point we get out of the way. How often do we try to make life easier? Sometimes the process of someone coming to know Christ is painful. Uh, there are struggles and challenges that we have to deal with. And if we interrupt that, if we make it easy, if we help them over that hump, if you will, sometimes the lack of struggle is what might prevent them from coming to know Jesus. So we have to be there. We have to be empathetic and compassionate and loving. But resist, and this is, this is hard to do, but resist the urge to take away all of the struggles. Uh, we can do this, we do this with our children and it's becoming a more commonly discussed thing that if you, if you make life too easy for your children, if you remove all of the barriers and hurdles as they grow, they don't develop certain skills that they need in life that when they become adults. And so not that we make life intentionally hard for our children or for someone coming to know Christ, but, but I have to examine myself and the, the intentions that I have and make sure that they're led by the Holy Spirit and they're godly, not that I am paving the road to hell with good intentions, uh, if you will. And that's a, I think that's a, it's a good check. But in all of this, and I, and I say all of this, in all of this, it goes contrary to what we think, but, but man, it's so exciting for me to know that I can find joy in getting out of God's way and letting him be who he is because he made me to be who I am. And I, and I just want to encourage you that if you're, if you're struggling, if you're dealing with a hard situation about knowing what to do, find joy in the fact that, that God is there and he's listening and, and he's ever present. And it's, it's about him, not us. Uh, and I hope, I hope you find encouragement in that. Uh, I want you to know that I'm praying for you. Uh, and, uh, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. God bless.